Uh, first of all, let me say thanks for being here today. A um, couple of quick housekeeping notes before we, uh, before we get started with uh, Coach Pierce and the guys here. Um, first of all, if you received a 2014-15 parking pass from us during the season, you take those off your hat right there, um, during football season for our press conferences that we had during uh, the football season, those are going to be good through the rest of the athletic year. So you will be able to use those to park in the Rosen lot um, during baseball games. If for some reason you didn't get one of those and you think that you're going to probably cover us a majority of the season, a majority of our homestand, uh, just let me know and I can work on trying to get you one. Otherwise, if you're going to come periodically, maybe on a Tuesday, maybe you know a couple of weekend games, just email me a couple of days beforehand and we could put you on a list as opposed to getting you one of the, uh, the hanging things for your car. Additionally, uh, if you've covered any of uh, our basketball games this year and you got a credential from Brian Miller or Josh Bates, who are our men's and women's basketball SIDs, those are also good for baseball. So if you have one of those already, there's no need to get another uh, credential. You're already good to go for baseball. But once again, if you do need one, uh, let me know and we'll get you uh, squared away with that as well. Um, TV trucks, in terms of parking for TV, um, we're going to have you guys park uh, along the sidewalk behind right field, up against the curb. You guys won't need a parking pass for the TV trucks. Um, we'll have you guys on a list. And if you need to park there, uh, just let me know. And if you guys need to do a live stand-in or anything like that, just let me know. And we'll work on maybe uh, moving something else. We kind of want to leave that Ben Weiner Drive clear um, for Acadian Ambulance purposes. 88.3 FM WRBH, that's going to be the home of Tulane baseball games on the radio this year, just like the uh, last few seasons. Um, of course, all of our games will be streaming audio on uh, TulaneGreenWave.com to paid members of all access. And then, of course, all of our home games will have uh, streaming video as well. For post game this season, what we're going to do is we're going to do our interviews down on the field or in the dugout, depending on weather conditions. But we won't be needing to go up through that back hallway for those of you who cover us on a, on a regular basis. I know it's going to be a lot easier, I think, on some of you guys. So we'll just be able to go right into the dugout. Um, to just make your player requests to me, and uh, we'll, we'll get them uh, kind of corralled before they head up to uh, shower and head home for the night. And, uh, and then we'll do our interviews down there. As for practices, if you guys want to come out and cover us during a practice, shoot me a text, shoot me an email, give me a call, and I'll let you know what time we're practicing today. And then I'll also let you know which uh, players are available for that day. Uh, because obviously, a lot of these kids are in class uh, particular days and some of them are coming late to practice or getting to practice right at, at the start time. So not everybody will be available every day. So just let me know and we'll work on that. And uh, last but not least, um, we've got our alumni game coming up on February 7th. We're going to have two games. Uh, at 10.30, we're going to have a, a softball game, which is basically all of our older alumni, which is, I believe, if they've exhausted their eligibility or graduated in the year 2000 or before, they're going to play against one another. And then the following uh, game at 1 o'clock, we're going to have uh, a team comprised of players that played between 20, uh, 2001 and 2014 against our current roster. And that'll be at 1 o'clock. It's free to the public. If you guys want to come out and cover us, we'd be more than happy to have you guys out there that day. Should be a lot of old faces around that, that uh, will be really kind of fun to see. Uh, so that's it from me. Um, we've got a couple players up here. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of do this kind of like an NCAA regional style format. If you guys have any questions, please raise your hand. Nicole's got the microphone. She'll bring it around to you. Um, if you have any questions for any of the players, too, just address them. That's why we've got these little nifty things out here. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce in his fourth year as a collegiate head baseball coach and his first year here at Tulane, David Pierce. Thank you. Thank you for all coming. And it's been a whirlwind of seven months. It's uh, very exciting to be here. Very exciting to look forward to the season on great weather. Being in the south gives us that opportunity. But, you know, we're really just thrilled to death that this thing's getting ready to get started. Um, and I just want to go through a couple of thank yous before we actually get into the actual press conference. Um, I'd like to thank President uh, Scott Cowan for giving me this opportunity. He was actually here for, I think, two more weeks after he hired me. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, and then, of course, President Fitz now taking over. I'd like to thank Rick Dixon 
and the administrative staff who's just been 100% supportive of what we're trying to do and accomplish. Uh, I have a great coaching staff and I'd like to thank them and their wives, their families for allowing them to come with us. Uh, that would be Sean Allen, Philip Miller, and Phil Haig. And uh, I really like to thank Brian Myers, our baseball ops position who we retained and is with us. And then our strength conditioning coach, um, I would like to thank Coach Russ Buller. Um, as you look ahead, we have some so many support people in our program. And like I said at the, the initial um, press conferences, you know, there's so many people that are involved in this. I really like like to thank Beth, um, who is our program coordinator, Trace Gidry, who handles all of our equipment. And uh, really like to give special thanks to my caravan partner, Mr. Curtis Akey. We actually have been on the road kind of promoting our, our season and trying to get the fans back involved in Tulane baseball. We are really striving for excellence, and our goal is to strive for excellence on and off the field and try to do as much as we can to accomplish that. Um, it, we need everybody in our program to be accountable from our coaches to our support staff, and especially our players. But it actually starts with me and filters down. And uh, you know, I've committed to this program, committed to this university, our staff has, and um, I think the players will attest that we're gonna give them everything that we have. Um, as we move into our inaugural season, we really look at defining the success of our program and what we are and what we want to become. Uh, you're looking at one season going into now. Um, the program has such a great history under Rick Jones for 21 years, and I'm thankful for that. The competition that I had against him, his teams, our teams really had some battles. and. Um, I'm really thankful for Coach and, and what he did here. And we have such aspirations of what we want to do, like I said, on and off the field. But we identify ourselves when we look at success, how do we actually identify that? And, you know, there's more than just winning the national championship because there's only one team that actually wins the national championship. But that is one of our, our objectives is to strive for that. Our expectations are great, and we're given a great opportunity to play this great game, to coach this great game. But we have more than just one championship to strive to win. I mean, we're actually looking at five types of championships throughout the course of the year. And we look at that in the regular season title, we look at that in the tournament championship, to advance and win a regional, to advance and win a super regional, and the aspirations to advance to the College World Series and win the national championship. So the season's kind of broken up in stages. And the early part of the season is very critical when you look at the scheduling and how important it is with RPIs and how important the opening weekend series at Pepperdine and uh, Malibu, California, how important that series becomes to start preparing an RPI schedule. And we've done that in our preparation. Uh, we have a great schedule. It's very balanced. We, uh, of course, we open at Pepperdine. Then we move into four home series with, I usually mess this order up, but I'm gonna do my best. Uh, San Francisco. Let me get this right. Creighton, Gonzaga, Xavier. And then we're back on the road at UC Riverside. Our midweeks are, same type of midweeks you've seen in the past. We've got Southeastern three times, UNO twice, uh, LSU, of course, twice, Nichols uh, twice, Southern Miss home and home as well. We have one game against UNC Wilmington, which is uh, piggybacked on our trip to East Carolina. So that is kind of the breakdown of the non-conference schedule. When you look at the conference schedule, it's very interesting because, you know, there's there's eight teams that play baseball, so you have 21 games. Well, what they added is a, a natural rivalry. So we play Houston, which is considered our natural rivalry, six times. Uh, of course, it's the best 
team that they've had since probably 2000. Uh, they're ranked as high as number three in the country. Uh, going into the conference, a great new conference, uh, great balance, three new coaches in the league, um, a lot of Conference USA teams that, excluding UConn, it's all Conference USA teams that moved into the American. And um, very good and very balanced. So I think it's uh, up for grabs. I, I definitely think that Houston is the front runner going into it. Um, we have began practice. We started January the 23rd. Uh, of course, baseball starts, so it's rain, cold, wind. Uh, but we got through Friday. We had two great days on Saturday. We start our second round of uh, inner squads today. And everything's in our preparation for opening day at Pepperdine. Um, we have 23 returning players. Of those 23, eight potential starters from last year at different times uh, are position players. And then we have seven pitchers that threw at least 12 innings. Uh, last year, and we've had, added a, a, a handful of additions with a couple of freshmen and two really good junior college pitchers that have a chance to help us right away. Um, just open it up to questions. When you got here and took the job, first priority, second priority, take me through how you set up your program and what were the first maybe three four or five steps that you took immediately when you got here? Well, fortunately, I didn't have to hire a staff because we've, we brought the entire staff. And that's been a blessing when you look at transition. Um, you know, we're not coaching coaches and we're not trying to get on the same page and build philosophy. It's been intact. Um, so that was initially making sure that all took place. Secondly is retention of players. We wanted to make sure every player that was on the team last year knew that they were welcomed back. We encouraged them to come back, and uh, I thought we did a great job of retaining them. And then we just wanted to start with our day-to-day -day process of what, how, how we go about things, how we meet um, our strength conditioning program, the time of the year that we run our strength conditioning program, our fall ball, early versus late. And so just putting everything in place and um, selling houses and buying houses. Coach, I know Curtis was telling me how you've been to the uh, regional every year since you've been a head coach. It's been, I think, seven years since they've made one here. Just how do you, you bring in that mentality that, hey, I've been to a regional every year, you carried in to this uh, program? Well, first of all, I think we're going to benefit from some young players that played a lot last year and have a lot of experience, but they're still young. And so uh, there's a foundation to win. And... I think what we do is we really build a consistent approach. Uh, we're not reinventing the game, uh, but our approach is a day-to-day -day effort. When we teach guys in the bullpen, we want to make sure that we're being precise. We want to understand that, um, you know, th that we find the best thing that works for their particular arm. We want to maximize a player, so um, we want to put guys in the best position we can to have them succeed. And that's by position, as well as um, maybe a pinch hit, maybe a platoon situation. But we're going to have to utilize our roster. And uh, I think we have a good balance. Coach, if you can, describe your coaching philosophy to us. What kind of a coach are you overall as far as a, the program philosophy and as far as the game itself, as far as managing the game? Well, I mean, as far as the program and philosophy, I mean, I played and I've been in, involved in the game my entire life. I had the opportunity to coach 12 years of high school. Um, so you take, at that point, you didn't really have an opportunity to recruit players. You take what you have. Uh, at Houston, I worked and learned un under uh, Rainer Noble for two years. And we were able to uh, create a balanced lineup. We had speed at the top, we had power in the middle, we had speed at the bottom. So we had the ability to recruit the type of player that we wanted and then allow players to, to really emphasize what they do well. Uh, I think you're going to see the same thing here. We have, we have some guys that don't run really well, but they can hit a little bit. So we might have to utilize the bench and, and, and maximize the ability to score that run. As far as the actual philosophy that I have of um, playing the game, I think it's a simple game. 
and we want to keep it simple. Uh, we want to try to give them as much information as we can early on and then back off and let them play the game. And, it, and we, we really want to try to stay out of their way and clear their minds and allow them to do that. Um, as far as an offensive philosophy or a, a pitching philosophy, we really stay away from the batting average as much as possible and really talk a lot about run production, uh, runs plus RBIs, and how we're producing on base percentage versus batting average. Um, being very good with the ball in play, advancing when the opportunity's there, back runners taking advantage of uh, throws to the wrong base, and, and being very aggressive with the ball in play, and, and being very adaptable with the ball in play. And I think that's what you find out is that, you know, you process the play, you put it in your head, and then the ball changes the play. And so it's our, our intent is to give them the information and allow them to make good decisions on the field. And that's where they become reactive players. Uh, so that's really what our, our strive is. Um, I really like the three-run home run as, a, as far as part of my philosophy. It works well. Coach, can you talk about the uh, transition and the, and the process of coaching uh, players who were recruited by another coach and are here before you were and how that kind of chemistry is developed? That's a great question because, you know, I find it as such, to me, it's such a challenge um, for me and our staff. It really is a great challenge for us. We did the same thing at Sam Houston State three years ago, going on four years. We inherited 21 players. We brought in 22 players, create as much competition as possible. Well, Tulane doesn't give you the opportunity to truly bring in that many players. We inherited 23 players and, and returning uh, players. But a lot of the players that came in were already recruited as well. Um, I don't care who recruited them. In my opinion, there are players, and we're going to coach them as hard as we can. And, and if they do well, we're going to be thankful for them. And if they, if they struggle, we're not going to blame the previous coach. Uh, we look at it as there are players now. Coach. Private schools have an inherent challenge with the scholarship rules the way they are right now with the partial scholarships. Obviously, you had a lot of success at Rice <laughs> as a coach here, but what are your views on that and how, how, how hard is it to over, how do you, how do you overcome those inherent? Well, I issues? think the, the number one thing, and this is talked about through all private schools, not just Tulane, but the number one thing is you realize the player you can recruit, the player that fits into Tulane University academically as well as the type of player that you look for. Not everybody fits into Tulane or a private school. So what you have to be willing to do is understand that you go out to a tournament or you watch players, they have to be the right fit. And that goes for academics as well. Uh, we're trying to do everything we can to enhance every ability of every fashion to, to create income or to be able to utilize the merit scholar. I mean, we have a, a great merit program. We need to utilize it. Um, our athletic scholarships, of course, are 11.7. It is what it is. Um, so we're just going to explore every avenue that's possible and um, really filter our recruiting towards the type of kid that fits into Tulane. Yeah, as far as position battles, uh, you know, you've seen a, a couple of days so far. Is the third starter, I mean, is that probably the, the hottest competition right now, would you say, or is it kind of spots in the outfield, or is it really just everywhere? We have, truly, we have six kids that are fighting hard for starting roles and platoon roles in the outfield. We have six very good infielders that a couple of them can play multiple positions. So we have great competition there. Right now, I feel like we have nine potential guys that could be in a position in a starting role. Early in the year, we'll probably piggyback a couple of starting arms and double up a little bit just for longevity. Um, and then you look in the bullpen. And usually your bullpen is formulated, especially middle relievers are formulated based on the guys that aren't your Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and possibly Tuesday. Um, I, for the, f the three years at Sam Houston State where I was actually 
100% in charge of the decision making of the pitching staff. I don't think one single year we started with a Friday night guy. From that Friday through that Tuesday, the same four guys. Um, throughout the year, we have hiccups and kids struggle, so we got to back them off. Maybe we got to get them right and then um, get them back in there. And we've utilized closers as starters and starters as closers, and we'll continue to use the best players we got and the best available arms that we have at the time. Yes, Coach talked about liking the, the three run home run ball a lot. Talk about this, the switch to the ball now. I mean, so many years people were complaining about not enough offense. Do you like it, and what does it do for this year? Oh, ball I definitely club? like it. And I truly felt like going into the, um, before the change of, of the bat, and it was in 2011, I believe, when they changed the bat. At that time, I felt like the game was very balanced and was right. And then they changed the bat for some safety reasons. And um, it, it put a damper in the game. I mean, it really became um, pitching and defense, which the purists like and I like. But I don't think every guy should be pitching a two-to-one ball game. Um, so the offense became obsolete. So the game changed and became much more of a short game than you know, allowing a, t a team or a kid to have the opportunity to be that hero late in the game. And uh, changing the ball is going to balance it back out somewhat. It's a little tough question for me to answer because I'm in a different part with different players. And so what we kind of estimate right, right now, I would have to say there's probably about a 20-foot carry, uh, the, the difference. Uh, I think you're seeing the ball. When a guy hits it in the gap and it's got backspin, it's not dying as much. And, um, you know, conditions have a lot to do with it right now as well. Friday, Saturday, wind's blowing straight in. We didn't, you know, we didn't drive too many balls out of the park or off the wall. And Sunday we hit two home runs, wind's blowing out. So I do see if a kid gets it, uh, if he barrels it, he's got a chance. I think it's going to be good for the game, no doubt. Um, those of us who have covered the program for the last two or three years um, noticed that there was a lot of pressure given the health situation that Coach Jones was under. And I think coaching style of the staff was very intense. You see more laid back. Could you kind of just describe <laughs> your person? You see more mellow. And I know I've talked to your son. He would disagree with that. I think what time bit, of the year am I mellow? Yeah, <laughs> maybe right now is the best time of year. But, you know, did. Did you make an attempt to connect with each of the players in the program? And you know, tell me about that process because some of them seemed a little rattled coming out of, you know, those circumstances. I, I just think when you don't reach your goals of you know record and play in the postseason, uh, when you're missing that, I mean, that's pressure. It's just that's what kids want. That's what coaches want. Um, so I just think everybody has taken a deep breath. Um, for whatever reason, I, th I think kids are responding very well. Uh, but I don't really know about what happened in the past. I just know that the kids are doing a great job with this staff, and and uh, we're very laid back. Very laid back. <laughs> um, if a player is in a hitting slump, for example, how do you deal with that player? You know, you know how. How do you interact with them? Are you a guy that's going to pat him on the back or kick him in the butt or you know? What's your approach when you have a player that's struggling? I think that's, the, I think that's a big part of coaching right there, is how to deal with each individual player. I don't think you deal with every player the same way because of their own personalities. Um, Coach Allen handles our hitters and does a great job with them. And I try to stay out of the way. But I'll usually inject. Um, and most of the time, it's, you know, there's nobody that goes to home plate and, and not trying to be successful. So it's my job to really just encourage them and um, you know, give them the confidence that we have confidence in them. And like I said, I've never said a word to a player after he had a poor at bat. It's just not the appropriate time. Now, if he doesn't get a bunt down, that's different. Uh, if he has a poor base running mistake, that's different. But when you're in the confrontation between a pitcher and a hitter, which is the essence of the game, Nobody's trying to fail. And so you just want to build their confidence and allow them 
to make good decisions and understand that I want to try to hit the strikes and take the balls. How did the, uh, how are the challenges and the expectation level at Tulane different from where you, what you came into at Sam Houston? And how do you feel like your experience as a head coach there prepared you to be a better head coach in, the, in your second time? I, I just think, I mean, first of all, every job situation, if it's the same team coming in, I mean, excuse me, if it's the same program and you have a new team coming in, it's a different year. If you leave Sam Houston State, you gain the experiences that you had there, what worked, what didn't work. We actually changed some of our bunk coverages three weeks ago going into the spring just because we've used them in our system for 15 years and they haven't really been something that we felt like is appropriate. It hasn't been successful. So I think you have to evaluate yourself every every single day. And I think you have to learn from your coaches. I think you have to learn from your players. And the day that I quit learning is the day I need to retire. Anybody else? Players, anybody wants players? <clears throat> I guess for all four players, it's, what's it been like just with a new coach and uh, Coach Pierce so far? Uh, one thing I noticed was just the energy that these all, all these new coaches bring. Um, you know, they expect a lot of us out of the, in the classroom, on, in the weight room, and on the field. Uh, that's the biggest thing I've known or noticed, really, just the energy that these guys bring, and we just feed off of that, which I think is going to help us a lot in the season. Uh, probably the best thing I've ever heard Coach Pierce say, <clears throat> it was recently, and it pretty much covers uh, what type of coach he is. He told us in a meeting, he said, we will win. And that's all that needs to be said about Coach Pierce and this coaching staff, honestly. Uh, I would say, like Alex said, <clears throat> uh, I mean, they bring a different mentality, kind of. It's more relaxed, but with a higher intensity to put pressure on the other team, which I like a lot, really. And uh, I think it's going to be very successful. The atmosphere has been great here. We're doing everything we can to prepare to win. You know, they're giving us all the support that we need, putting us in the best position we can to win, take the field February 13th and start a good year. Garrett, um, is the mood lighter this spring, kind of heading into the season? I mean, how, how do you compare this, how you feel going into this season compared to last season? Is there any difference? Uh, I would say the main difference is they expect us to put in the work and we want to put in the work and that's going to show on the field instead of putting that pressure on ourselves you know going up to the plate you know wondering if we're going to get a hit and, you know we stay late now like we stay early we come early and it's going to show on the field we expect to succeed and that's the big difference uh the, a lot more confident because we put in the work the work will show it Um, Garrett and, and Alex, how many times did Coach and his staff mention that the 14 years, 14 regionals um, in the fall to you guys, that he's never not made a regional? And, and do you see that as pressure, or do you see that as just an opportunity to succeed? Um, I see that as an opportunity. Uh, we know what Coach Pierce and his staff bring. We know that they have been very successful. So when they come and try to teach us something new or critique us a little bit, it's, it's you know, we're all ears. We're listening to what they have to say. because. We know they've been successful and just trying to help us and want the best for us. Yeah, it goes back to what I said earlier. I mean, I think he's said it once huh, in the beginning of the year. And it just goes back to the fact of we will win this year. And uh, the works, the, if we put in the work and we expect it to show on the field. Let me add to that, we will win a little bit. <laughs> it's about more than just on the field. It's on and off the field. and. And our expectations are to win in the classroom, to win on the field, to win in the community, and, and then our personal lives. And if we do those things the right way, we'll win our share of baseball games. I guess Garrett and Hunter, I guess the new ball for as hitters, how much do you guys like the idea of, hey, we get a little more offense going for our pitchers these days? Uh, I like it a lot, personally. Uh, it definitely evens up the playing field a little bit. Uh, you can definitely tell a difference, whether it's from batting practice or 
in the game, you know. Uh, definitely hit a lot, a lot more home runs this fall. And uh, like Coach said, the ball in the gap definitely carries. You can definitely tell the difference. It just feels better when you swing, make good contact, barrel it up, the ball travels, jumps off the bat. It's not last year, you know, back when we played with the old balls, you would hit something square and it just wouldn't carry as far as you thought it would or you hoped it would. Now you're hitting balls and they're carrying further, getting over outfielders' heads and just giving you more chance, doubles, home runs, extra base hits. Coach, how, how much of a, of, of a salesman have you been to these guys over the last seven seven months, or is it just about just implementing what you do and just letting that sell itself? No, I think it's both. I mean, I can't sell insurance, but I can sell our coaching staff and baseball to our guys, and and we do every day. I mean, we want them to bring the right attitude every single day, and and we have that choice. And if they do that and they have clear minds, they great great bodies. Uh, they're great athletes, so we're trying to just allow them to release and go play. And so we do. We really sell it every day, uh, and then we implement. I'm curious if you have any superstitions. Are you a superstitious guy? <laughs> superstitions. Um, yeah, a little bit. But I don't really share them. <laughs> <laughs> 